Hi, my name is George Pearson and this special Photoshop Elements video is part of a series that I have on doing photography techniques for wedding photography. You can see a few examples in here from the different videos. Now all of these are using images that are available free on the internet and I have a link in the description for you to download the videos if you want to work with the same images that I'm using in my video demonstrations. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements wedding video, we're going to be taking this nice picture over here and making it look more romantic by adding a lot of warmth into it and a bright light source and so forth. So we're going to take what's already a good picture but make it a lot better by adding a lot more to it. Okay, let's just get this out of the way and we'll start taking a look at this picture. Now the first thing you want to do when you're doing this kind of work is you want to improve the picture as much as possible to start off with. So let's take a look at our levels on this image, see if we can adjust the levels. We'll do a new layer here. In this case we're going to be coming up here to layer and adjustment layer and then levels. Choose OK. Here we go. Now this shows us the levels contained in the image, the amount of each brightness in here. The left side is your blacks or your darks. You know, it's a little bit right down there. It's a little bit in between the the glass in here, right in here, some real darks. Part of her hair is very, very dark. That's all the stuff down here. The whites are up on the right hand side. Those there's no real pure white, but we're almost at pure white. And that'd be right in this area. You can brighten the whites up by pulling this control to the left. See that? There we go. And you can make the darks richer by pulling the left in a little bit. So I'm just going to pull the left in just a bit and give us a little more richness to the image. The brights are already pretty good. I mean, they're, they're just about there. I don't really want to blow out that bit of the dress. So I'll leave the, the brights where it is. I'll bring the darks up. We also can adjust our output levels and actually bring the, the whites down if you want to in here. Bring the blacks up a little bit so you can control overall picture here as well. But we'll stick with the input levels and just do a slight adjustment here on the black, bringing it up at about 15 to 18. And that just richens up those colors, making it a little bit nicer color. Okay, now that's done. Click on the close button. There's our first level control, we've come in here and we've adjusted the values a bit. Didn't Again, didn't need much, but a little bit. Now let's begin working on the colors. We're going to be putting in a gradient first and giving us some warmth up here. We're doing a, a couple of steps to give us the warmth on the right hand side. First we'll do a new gradient layer, and that's layer, and new fill layer this time, and gradient. Let's choose OK. I want the angle, maybe do our angle kind of like that, or actually flip it around. So the angle now we have, the color is over here, upper right hand corner, and we're going down to nothing left hand corner, that's what our gradient has right here. So all we need to do, once we have the angle where we want this, I want to have that just kind of right up in there, it looks pretty good, is just to change the color on the gradient. So click on the gradient itself, that brings up the gradient editor. This is already a good place to start, so I'm not going to be worrying about this. The top controls here, these are the stops for for your opacity. Here's 100% opaque, you know, full color, and 0% opacity or no color. Let's change this stop to a red. These are the color stops at the bottom. Change this one to a red. I'll just take a clear to the top and up like that. Just clear up to the top right hand, red. And now notice we're getting a little bit of bluishness in here because of that blue stop. You can change this stop down here to whatever you want. If you want to make it warm, you can make it a bit warmer. Notice how it kind of changes the gradient. Even though we're going to transparent, we still have some color happening in there. So I'm going to leave this one in the in the warm range, just kind of in here, so we're kind of a mustardy color. And that gives us this nice warmth to the picture. A bit of that yellow is coming in here. A lot of the red up here, upper right hand corner, choose OK. So there's our gradient level. Now obviously we don't want to have it look like this. 
just you know blocking out the whole picture so we need to blend this layer in with the layers underneath and we'll do that with the screen blending mode your blending modes are right here scroll down where it says screen and it just kind of blends that in now it's a bit too much as you see so we're going to be doing a bit more on this you can always control these by adjusting your opacity one of the reasons why I'm bringing everything in here on separate levels is that once we get everything in place we can then come back and tweak these levels a little bit we'll go ahead and do that as a final step tweak all of our levels until we get just the effect that we want okay so that's the first step our first color fill in here color gradient we're going to do another one now now this new layer here is going to be a gradient map that's up here layer and adjustment layer gradient map right there choose OK this is kind of interesting as it does it takes a gradient and the maps that gradient onto the values in the image what I want to have is black on the right hand side and red again on the left hand side again click in the gradient right there brings us back up again leave the black on that side go over here to the left hand side let's change this color over to red clear to the top pull it to the top there's our red so we're going red to black and you can see it's, it's coming in and actually giving us a negative at this point if I wanted to have this as a positive I would simply reverse these colors just choose OK reverse the colors and then have a positive and that's a negative so you can go either way on those so there is that new gradient map of course I don't want to have it look like this I want to blend this into everything else so normal new soft light and that just blends that in now if I take the soft light off look at the normal again take a look at what we're doing here we're putting red into the dark areas and leaving no red in the light areas actually adding in red into the shadows with this one gradient map so that's what that's all about that gives us that 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 red tint in there in the dark parts of the picture so we're beginning to get there let's just bring our opacity down a bit on on that that just helps to warm up the shadows this is helping us to give us our, our basic red this next layer warms the shadows up so we're beginning to build on this I'm going to bring this layer down just a little bit so we can just see a bit better what's going on there we go just a little bit like that about 68 now let's put a new adjustment layer above these now each time you put an adjustment layer in here it reacts on everything underneath so the stacking order of these is important so we ha now have some coloration happening in here we can come back in now and adjust our levels again and adjust them through the coloration so let's make a new adjustment layer layer adjustment layer levels choose OK here we go now our midtones are right here and I can control those to control that midtone value so we can come in here and we can actually adjust that so going to the left brings the values up a little bit I can make the darks richer again by bringing the left in just a touch so I'm mostly just kind of bringing the brightness back into the picture compensating for some of those colors there we go there's our levels control okay we're getting better let's now adjust the contrast a little bit here we'll do another adjustment layer so layer adjustment layer brightness contrast choose OK here we go we can increase the contrast a bit and just try to balance that out Let's get a bit more contrast but not too much brightness it's a balancing between these two bring the contrast up brightness down a bit just a very very subtle shift in there you can see how that looks there it is before and here it is after so I'm just adding in some richness in here trying to keep everything else the same but adding in some richness with this okay we're getting there now we're going to do a bit more color we've kind of readjusted our image to compensate for these color values that we put in here we've readjusted the image let's now bring back in some more color and I'll do a new layer up here 
layer, new fill layer, solid color, choose OK. Let's switch this over into our reds again. There we go. Now at this point, I want kind of a medium red, not real, real bright. So I'm going to come down here actually to my orange, come to the medium red area. Maybe tone that down just a little bit. And just knock a little bit of the edge off. If you're too close to this right edge, your full saturation, this is full brightness. Bring it down just a little bit. Just kind of knocks the edge off of that color. All right, it gives us a little bit more coloration for the overall image. We can now blend this in with our picture. And we're going to come down here where it says linear dots. These are our images here. These are our blending modes that lighten the image up. So I'll do a linear dodge add like that. You can see that that's way too much. So let's now bring our opacity way, way down on that. Maybe around 20%. That just brings in more of this warmth into the overall image. Again, so we're just keeping our warmth here. And so our whites are staying white, which is nice. So we brought in a lot more warmth. We're, we're warming up the whole picture this way step by step. Okay, now I want to hide this big bright red splotch up here. Now the red splotch is helping with that gradient, helping to colorize that whole picture. That was, we're using that to colorize the darks, as you recall. So we're going to put in some of this color over here on top of this. And then we're going to screen that in just to kind of bring down that red spot. To do that, I'm going to be using a paintbrush this time. Let's go over to our paintbrush and go to our foreground color. And I'm going to choose a color just off of, sorry, let me make sure I'm on the right layers. Come down here to the background layer. There we go. And just in here, some kind of a, kind of a warm, warm tan. Maybe a little lighter in there. I'm trying to find just the right value from the picture. Maybe over here would be even a bit better. That's, that's closer to what I want. I think that's a good color in there. Just kind of a tan color taken from the image. Choose OK. And let's change our brush. You can see we have a brush from a different discussion in here. So let's go back to the default brushes. And I'll just choose one of the soft brushes. Double click on that to set that. And I'll bring the size way up. not quite that much. Be around 650, 700 in there someplace. Up to the top, make a new layer. And I'm just going to come in here and just kind of tap in that area. Notice I'm hiding that bright, bright red. And I'm using the coloration that matches the rest of the picture. That red, of course, because it was a gradient, of course, is still interacting with the rest of the picture. So we want to keep the gradient there, but I just want to hide that one spot. But I don't want to have this either as big flat things. So we need to blend this back into the picture again. And that's easy to do. Let's just go ahead and screen this. So we'll come down to screen and bring the opacity down. And that allows me to choose exactly how much of that tan color I want to include to kind of soften up that red on that upper right hand corner. So that's looking pretty good at this point. We now can come in and give us a, a nice highlight up here. And we'll do that with a lens flare. Now to give you the most control on the lens flare, fill a, a new layer with black or just do a new fill layer. But I'm just going to fill a, a layer with the paintbrush. So I'll come down here. Let's set our foreground color back to black. Paint bucket and fill. There we go. Let's now put a lens flare right upper right hand corner and that's filter, render, lens flare. And you can choose what, what flare you want to use. I think I'll do the 105 prime and I'll put it right there upper right hand corner. Just like that. Choose OK. We now can blend this layer in with the rest of the picture. Of course, and that's using the screen mode once again. And there it is. Now, because this is on a black and on, on its own layer here, I can actually move that layer around if I want to reposition that 
But if you notice, if you move it, you will get a bit of an offset in here. So just be careful. It's it's okay to move it, you know, further up a little bit maybe. But don't go too far or you begin to come off the edge. Now to fix it, if I want to move it up a little bit, or let's say if I, let's say it's right here. I wanted to move the lenser over to here. Easy way to do this is just to take this side and stretch the picture back out again so that it's larger than your frame. If it's a, a small move like that, if you need to do a big move, just redo this layer and redo your lens flare because it's a nice highlight. Now, that's the basic coloration. Let's go back and check our levels. We have two levels in here. Let's double check these and double check our brightness contrast and make sure that everything is okay. Now, to bring your levels back up, just double click on the level. And at that point, you can come in here and you can actually readjust your settings. So I'm going to darken my darks down a bit by pulling in the dark side here. And let's take a look at the light. Light's fine. So let's kind of darken the darks down. Now what I'm doing here is I'm working on the original picture in behind all of the coloration. So I'm not changing the coloration this time. I'm just adding some richness back into the picture by pulling the blacks further or the darks further into the image again. Just like that. If you want to adjust with your coloration, that's going to be this one here that has your first set of colorations. Again, double click on the icon. And here we can adjust and is adjusting with the color this time. This so is just a matter of going through and tweaking your settings a little bit until you're happy with your final result. And then brightness contrast, double click. We can check our brightness contrast in here. And that looks pretty good. So there we go. That's how to take you know, a nice picture. There's a thumbnail, a lot of blues in that. Take a nice picture, add a lot of warmth into the picture, and still allow yourself full control over that image. For instance, I can come back here to my gradient. I can even bring the amount of reds down a bit by backing down a bit on that. So by having everything on separate layers, it gives me full control at any point to come back in and readjust the overall image without touching the original. So there we go. That's how to add a nice warm glow to an image and also keep it fully editable for adjustments later on. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.